Welcome back to Steel and Vance. We got to talk real estate, Linda. You and I talk about real estate all the time, <laughs> sidebar, right? So for not, years, not hard to shoehorn it into our program. Yeah, everybody kept saying the markets, the bubble's going to burst, the market's going to go down. You know, it ebbs and flows a little bit, never really goes down. Not in my lifetime. But there was a headline this week that had everybody freaking out, and it had to do with this Vancouver developer. Cora Mandel, mm -hmm. that has uh, filed for creditor protection, and the whole industry was like, whoa, this doesn't happen very often. Part of the concern was that there were pre-sales involved in projects. Yeah. People who'd already laid some money down is going, okay, what does this mean for me? Indeed. So we reached out to Angela Cal, who's a mortgage expert and an author, and this is her advice about pre-sales right now. Buying a pre-sale can be very attractive for many reasons, one of which you get a brand new property and second, you have anywhere from three months, from three to five years to actually complete on it, which can give you time to save more money as long as you're flexible within understanding the risks as well. One of the risks of buying a pre-sale is that they may not have the opportunity to complete the pre-sale that's consistent with the disclosure statement or contract that they made to you. If you find yourself in a situation with a development that you have purchased that has filed for credit protection or that is in receivership because they no longer can complete based on the current economy and the contract that they made with you, then you will get your deposit back and have to re-strategize based on today's interest rates and inventory available. How deflating would that be, though, to have to like, go back to square one after perhaps years of thinking that this was going to be your home and then waiting for it? And full disclosure, I know a couple of friends mm -hmm. and my parents who did a pre-sale purchase and then it was supposed to be ready in April and then it was going to be July and then it was September and then it was March. And it's like, wow, that's a long... Meanwhile, the market's oh. doing this yep. uh, and we just got some new numbers out from the BC Real Estate Association. And maybe not a big surprise because we knew it with these crazy interest rates. Check out this headline. This was in the Daily Hive. And they were saying, all right, uh, bottom line is we have seen prices fall somewhere in the neighborhood of 16%, sales down 50%, uh, inventory not really there. So people are not sure. There's like, do I jump in this market now? Is but it a that's good why we've got this one here yeah. because I talk to Sarah Daniels all the time, my realtor, for there full, dis go. full disclosure. Come for the real estate, but stay for the chips. Exactly. Stay for the chips. That's exactly what Thank it is. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank so you for having me. It sounds all gloomy when we talk about, you know, prices are down and, and you know, the sales are down. But that rates. is not what you're seeing. It is not what we're seeing. Um, definitely, there have been, especially for the last eight months, there has been a quietening of the real estate market. And that is not a bad thing, I will say. Nobody, I mean, not even realtors, not even well, normal realtors, I would say, <laughs> wanted to have that kind of market. It's yeah. really stressful when you're dealing with buyers and you're telling them, okay, we're in a multiple offer situation. There's going to be 10 other offers. Yeah. You have to put your best foot forward. You may or may not be able to have subjects. That's asking a lot of people and it's really scary. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously that has changed to a certain extent, but I will say that multiple offers are coming back. Oh no, really? Just dealt with it in Aldergrove. I listed a property. Uh, Jody knows all about this. I thought, Okay, well, you know, it, it needs we'll some work. Offer. It's it's good. It, it needs some work. It's yeah. got some. Uh, it's got some issues. The Great roof bones. is older. Great bones and everything. Um, listed the property. Went out for lunch with our good friend Sean Webster. Uh, she's also a realtor. And my phone started blowing up, and I'm thinking, what is going on here? We had about 15 appointments booked within the first hour. Come on. I phoned the uh, the executor of the of the uh, property who was in charge of the sale. We signed a direction of offers set for the next night. We had 14 offers. No, Amazing. so the property went for significantly over asking. We didn't take the top bid. The top bid was actually subject to financing, and their number was so extraordinarily high compared to the list price that I personally felt there's nowhere weird. they're going to be able to get the financing right. for that number. Right. They're going to try and pull a bait and switch. So let's go with the one that we did. So let's just put some moderation on that great mm. story. Love to hear that, especially mm. when everybody's freaking out that mm -hmm. if they have to sell, they won't be mm -hmm. able to. So there is mm -hmm. hope there. Right. But also, I think really a, an important piece of this puzzle is what you and I've talked about so many times mm. about when people say, I need to sell my house for this much right. versus I must sell my house what's it worth in this market. Absolutely. And everybody, you know, they look at their BC assessments, which are 
wackadoodle. Yeah, I mean, they have sense. no bearing in reality. So, I mean, that is a, a, a real issue when we're meeting with new clients to explain to them that's not what it, it's worth. But you're exactly right. The whole th idea of, um, you know, this is what I need. Right. Um, unfortunately, like, I mean, if your property is worth 800000 you may need a million dollars, but it's very unlikely that anybody is going to go along with that and say, oh, gosh, you need a million bucks? Well, I'm here to help. Right. You know, that's not how it works. But you've also got to remember that when the market changes, all the price points are coming down. So you should never really be focused on what you're selling for and what you're paying. You should be concerned about the spread. Right. That will move accordingly to how the market is doing. You talked about these multiple offers, which right. I hated as some who tried They're to buy in the past, it was yeah. like super stressful, mm -hmm. yeah. which is why the province moved to bring in these new measures kind of to cool it off. Right. So you had an opportunity to do due diligence. The rescission period, yeah. And, and at, people said, oh great, do that now when the market has dropped off. So it's good to see that. Are, it is that doesn't working? really, it doesn't really. Uh, the rescission period is, uh, it, it basically applies to, for the most part, offers that are unconditional, subject free right. offers. And then you have three days, business days, not including Saturdays, Sundays or holidays. So if if you wrote an unconditional offer on a property on Tuesday and it was accepted that night, you would have till Friday at 11.59 p.m. to rescind that offer. And right. if you do rescind that offer, you are going to be penalized 0.25% of the value of your offer. So if you offered a million dollars, you would be paying the, the seller $2,500. If there's a subject period, you've written an offer on that Tuesday, and you have a financing subject, an inspection, et cetera, and the subjects don't come off for a week, the rescission period does not apply. It's lapsed, right? So right. Um, it's from, the, from that moment. So people now are writing, obviously, uh, offers that do have subjects. However, having said that, the one that I just told you guys about in Aldergrove, that one was a subject-free offer. Really? So we don't report those sale prices until we've passed that rescission period. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, the offer was accepted on the Tuesday night, an actual Tuesday night. The deposit was picked up by the buyer's realtor on the Wednesday, lips zipped until 11.59 p.m. on Friday night. And, and then the rescission period is passed. Yeah and you can report the price. Yeah. I, we could talk to you for an hour, honestly, we really could. So I wanna to get to the interest rates because we're gonna dig in a yep. little bit deeper into that because people freaking out, variable mortgages mm -hmm. locked mm -hmm. in, can they afford their mortgage, what da 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 da. What's when the we Bank talk, of Canada gonna do next? Right, but when we look at it long-term, you're mm -hmm. born and raised British yep. Columbian, Absolutely. as am I, and we look at, at, at how things have moved in this market and with interest mm -hmm. rates, mm -hmm. Where are we at interest rate wise when we're not looking at what it was two years ago, but what it's been historically over perhaps a couple two of decades? Two years ago was insane. It was basically, here, have the money, yeah. have the money. Now, having said that, Canadian banks have historically had very high levels to, to reach to get that kind of financing. Yeah. You go to the States and I mean, they had no doc loans. That's why we had the huge housing crisis down there in the 2008 into 2009 mm -hmm. and well into the teens, 2000 teens as it were. But we don't have those same issues here. People are qualified at a much more stringent um, sort of capacity. So you don't get the same sort of uh, fallout per se. Right. Mm -hmm. But what's happened now, obviously, Obviously, the interest rates have come up, and what that has done is it's pushed the housing prices down. So if you were lucky enough to be able to afford a $2 million house a year and a half ago at those super low interest rates, that same house is probably selling for like 165 to 17 now. Your payment is going to be the same, mm. right? So you have to factor that in. And that's what we're actually starting to see now. It's been about eight months or so until it really started to sink in that these interest rates were coming and they were here to stay. It wasn't just a little blip up to scare people. They were gonna constantly go up. And what generally happens is people jump to the sidelines what's happening i'm worried about this yeah we're now you know eight nine ten months out and literally in the last week and a half two weeks and i've talked to all my agent friends in the office and, and elsewhere the phone is ringing like, people Push. want to list their people have to move yeah you know there's yeah. people that genuinely have to move you've taken out because of the uh removing foreign buyers from the equation and right. also the anti-flipping legislation mm -hmm. that came in federally so there's not that same sort of uh you know frothiness yeah. as it were it's a very frothy market. So now people are buying, you know, back to the normal way of purchasing is um, I've outgrown my current place or this place is too big. Right. It's time to move. Well, I tell you what, real estate never dull. Never in dull. In Vancouver, Sarah Daniels, realtor, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. And again, uh, the chips. I'm well, so excited. You, I mean, you snap to break so I can dig, dig in. Please do. Jody and I want to just 
get back to the interest rates yes. for a moment. Because the Bank of Canada went up, 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 I think eight times. And mm -hmm. then they said, we think we might be done. We're not entirely sure. We'll see how the you know economy reacts. So that has left people who are looking to get into the market saying, I'm not sure. If I'm going to buy this. and the market's going <laughs> to start again, not sure. right? <laughs> then do I do a variable? Do I lock in? This is what Angela Callow, mortgage expert, has to say. With those coming up for mortgage renewal, cash flow and interest rates are at the top of the priority list as we all deal with this record inflation. The lending institutions are incredibly smart and what they've done is they've actually priced shorter term mortgages a little bit higher than the five year fixed rate. And so with the five year fixed rate, you can qualify for more mortgage if when you're up for renewal, you're looking at paying out higher interest credit cards or putting together an emergency fund for yourself and if the cash flow is really really tight some lenders instead of just renewing their mortgage are going directly to extending their amortization and refinancing so they can improve their cash flow in the short term until interest rates do come back down so really strategizing around what is the best cash flow for you and what lender can you renew with to ensure that when interest rates go down you're not hit with a huge IRD penalty that can happen if you have your mortgage with a posted rate lender. Oh, thank you, Angela. It's scary, you know, because yeah. it's the biggest investment you're probably ever going to make. There are a lot of people worried right now and yeah. others who are looking at it like, well, at least it's not 18%, which oh, it God. has been in the past. I so, that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We got a lot of show to get to. And you got to stick around for everybody's favorite part of the show, of course. What the hell is wrong with people? And happy endings, because the happy endings today are... I might say. Very good. Uh, also, has tipping reached the tipping point? A lot of people talking about that right now. Do you feel the pressure to tip more, to tip in more places? We're going to talk about that when we come back. Make it stop, Linda.